Hi, this is Homer from Spitfire Audio with a video on our Albion One library. It's one of our cinematic orchestra library that we've recorded at Lintest Air Studios and it's still one of our flagship libraries for many reasons. It's incredibly versatile. It has so much content in there, so it lends itself to be incredible for people that want to start out as a composer. But equally, there is so much in there that it also comes in really handy and useful for seasoned composers. For this, I just want to give you a little tour about the different sections and sounds that this library holds and also give you an example of a demo of what it can sound like only using this one library. So just quickly before I play back what I have here, it's divided into numerous folders. So you have Albion One Orchestra, Brunel Loops, Darwin Percussion Ensemble, Stevenson Steam Band and the Albion Legacy folder. That includes instruments from the orchestra, so you have brass, woodwinds, string sections, but also percussion hits, percussion loops and then also synth sounds and synth loops. Let's play this back first. Let's start with Albion One Orchestra. So the combination of that is an over 100 piece orchestra and we've divided that into brass strings and woodwinds. And the strings, for example, work in a way that you have the first violin, second violins, viola, cello and double basses all in one patch laid across the keyboard. Sounds really nice and big. Then we also have pizzicato sounds. The colenios. Before I move on, I just quickly want to go over the GOI. We have the different mic positions here. So you have the close, tree, ambient and outrigger options. So you can choose your own mix of that. Then, as I already started, we have the different articulations down here. And coming to the long patch, I want to emphasize dynamics and expression, which are really important to breathe in life into what you're playing, especially with all the instruments that have lungs. So these are your tools to try and make it sound as realistic as possible. And given the instrument, you then also want to play with the vibrato as well. You don't want to have that one static. Then we also have consorts. Tremolo. And here there's a really big range of the dynamics in there as well. Another function that you can find, when you click on the treble clef icon over here, you get to the ostinatum view and that one comes in really handy. 
if you want to, for example, play in a fast repetitive line or something that's kind of a repetitive pattern, you can automate that one. So here you have the different note lengths that you can add. And down here is really cool. You have the velocities as well, so you can change the dynamics of each of these notes. So you can either play them back consecutively or you can put on chord mode to be able to play multiple notes at the same time, playing back in the rhythm that you've programmed over here. Really useful stuff. The one that I've sort of added here is a little bit random just because I wanted to get in that slight swarm feel to the section that comes in later on. Oh, and here's another patch that I really like, which are the low octaves. Sound really big and mighty. And you also have the shorts to that. There are some woodwinds. You probably noticed that we divided them into woods high and woods low, just meaning that we have the higher section of the woodwinds put together onto one patch, and then equally, same thing with the low, with the lower woodwinds. Then I'm just going to load this to give you an example of the low woodwinds. So they're really nice. Then we have the brass mid shorts. There's some longs. Here are the low ones. And this we call nasty. They have a lot more of this raspier tone to them. Here I think we have some high brass, yes. These are octaves, then these are without. And the shorts.
these are the instruments at a first glance, but then you have additional folders where you have, for example, some legato patches, meaning that the instruments have been programmed so that when it goes from one note to the next to be as natural as possible, rather than having the attack each time you're hitting a note. Really nice and useful for melodies. You also get them different combinations and then the individual patches as well to load. Let's maybe solo out the orchestral section and see what that sounds like. They already create a nice section by themselves. But to make it sound more cinematic, you have all these other patches to help out with. So let's look at the Stevenson Steam Band, which is the next patch that I've got loaded here. And the cool thing about these is that sound source actually derived from the instrument that I've just showed you. So we've taken the recordings of the orchestra and then morph them and put them through different effects to turn them into synth sounds. These appear in a different GUI that kind of give you different parameters to play around with. So you've got the ADSR, you've got the low pass and high pass filter, then also something that we call a wobble. So if you turn that up. Really fun to play with. And you can see you've got an A and a B section. So this side is copying what's over here. So you can actually load two different sounds. Once you've done that, you can choose a nice little mix between these two sounds. Further down here, you also have a gate sequencer. You can change the tempo of that gate sequencer and you can change the length as well, which is really cool. And down here are some more effects that you can add to the sound. Let's listen to another one. Ah, oh, this one I really like. Has a really nice glassy sound. And because these sounds all come from the orchestra itself, they automatically just sit really nicely with one another already. Some really lovely pad sounds there. The next one to show you is the Brunel loops. They are cinematic percussion loops coming really handy to bring in that rhythmic element that I'm using a different sound that I've then layered together with this one. Actually, let's solo them. And further on, I'm layering them with these guys. You get some really nice and small sounding patches as well as some slightly bigger and grittier sounding ones. These are just three, but there's a long list of presets that we have here for you. Looking into that one percussion now to give you an idea. These are individual hits. For example, we have the big cinematic Easter Island hits.
sounds that make it really suitable for the big screen. Here then also have individual hits of big percussions. And the last one I want to show you is called a creator patch. For this one I bounced out an anvil sound, went onto the spanner here, loaded the anvil sound into the section and dragged out the yellow section to kind of go across the whole keyboard so it's automatically stretching it out for you. And I thought it came out with this really cool tuned down sound that I'm using here. So these are just a few of the sounds that are within that library and I think with just a few patches that I've used here you can create already something fairly sizable. You saw earlier in the folders there's just endless presets that we have but then even if you load those into them you can mold them and it just offers you endless choices really with it. I also haven't really treated any of these sounds within this demo just because I didn't feel like I needed to. I love just being able to load one and just have fun with it. So they sound great straight out of the box. That's another reason why I feel they work so well. It's just all the sounds coming from the same sound source gel really nicely with one another and just make it sound really cohesive. I hope this was useful somehow and gave you a little overview of what the library can do and what it can sound like. If you haven't subscribed yet or liked it or pressed the bell button, you can do so. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.